with something. We have some public comment. So we've got the Recreation Committee here, I see. Their new mascot. Uh, <laughs> Luna? Luna. Luna. Luna, Steve, and um, our illustrious board member, Michelle, our former community. And here comes Ray. Newton Ray? We're just doing indirect introductions before you come. We have a new member of the uh, committee here, Luna. Hey. <laughs> it's the dog, Ray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, long day. Uh, well, we'll try to get things down and get out of here. Okay. Michelle, what you got? Actually, I are here on two. Sorry. It's fine. I don't want to. I'm just going to apologize. One part. We're here for two recommended issues. Sequence one of those. around the table, too. There's only, you know, we can all have our. It's like the pessimist uh, <laughs> polls go around here. Brief <laughs> there. They read. So I'll start in, in case I have to yeah. leave. Immediately. So at our last rec committee meeting, we moved some money around in our budget, and we thought we should probably just come and let you know and um, tell you what we're doing with that. So here you go. The top is the budget as approved, last one you saw. And the bottom is where we've moved the money. It's no additional money. Um, what we've done is we've funded the um, $1,000 to the Maverick Valley, it's the planning district in conjunction with the Riders. providers. It's a, it's a collaborative effort to put the trail kiosks all around the valley. There's two that are proposed to go up in Moortown, and they've asked for for that. The whole project in total, I believe it's something like $50,000. I know the other three valley towns have put in like $8,500 each. Um, this doesn't cover the cost of the kiosk, it just defers it a little bit, it just defers it a little bit. So what we did is we took money out of the storage shed, we took money out of the metal trash cans, and we took a little bit of money out of baseball fence, baseball field fence repair because that's gonna come in a little less than we thought. And the reason why we did this is, you know, we, we support this project and also when we did the survey, um, there was a lot of interest in the trails and especially in the mapping of the trails. So we thought to follow along with the survey results that we got, we should move this money around and support that effort. So we just wanted to let you know that you're approval. Oh, I would move to accept the um, change. Second. Yep. Yeah. Any further questions or discussion? Mm. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Thank you. And that sounds like a good idea. Um, yeah, they're beautiful too. I have a picture on my phone. It's been in the valley for a couple of times. Yeah, I think that's You can see these kiosks. Some of the big travels are up already. Nice timber frames with mapping. A lot of nice information. Yeah. One's going here and one's going on the south island. Oh, great. Yeah. A big one here and a small one at the south island because there's not a lot. Part of the nice here because so many people yeah. ask about right what, right. what is going on there with the trail. Yeah. Quite frankly, I don't know. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a big resource. Good. That's nice to know. Um, so when that gets up, make sure we let someone know, or maybe you guys can put it on the show you get about this on front page forum to let people know that where it's there. I'm sure the Valley Reporter would get some pictures of it. They told us the goal was to put them in by on around September 1, which would be great. If it was mm -hmm. before uh, more fast, that would be all better. Yeah. You know, with school starts. So. Yeah. Good. Will there be a trail map that we can give to the Valley Report? Uh, okay, well, uh, there is a map already, actually. That's part of what they've been doing. Part of what we're sort of paying in arrears is um, they have a website and they're already printing and they're bigger maps. There's actually a little section um, of our, our trail system right here. Like, you know, your little window. Yeah. Um, we have a little trail map up on our kiosk. Yeah, if you go to the kiosk. Yeah. And this kiosk will be a bigger, nicer version of that with some other information about the people that maintain the trail in the town. Okay. Good. Well, thanks. I always appreciate the efforts. 
there's a there's a part two. Yes. Um, so as part of our budget, um, there's a fence project, and I don't know if you have any materials. But that's yep. wonderful. I'm really glad you have a little visual aid. So um, if you turn to the, I think that the, the you know, pictures are always easiest. If you turn to the picture, the, the project consists of putting up some fencing around the um, around the tennis court where no fencing now exists. Yep. So there's high fencing around the backstops, completely open on the sides. The main reason, believe it or not, is to keep vehicles and other people from going on there and doing harm to the courts. So the court guys say wheels of any type, especially vehicles, very bad for the court. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, the ball just flies up the side. So this is going to be a short fence, 42 inches tall. It's going to overlap the openings, so that there's going to be no gate. It, it, you have to do a little less turn to get in there, so if you really want to bring a four-wheeler or something, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, if you really wanted to get a motorcycle or a bike or a stroller, you could still do that. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's sort of the common sense way to do it. So it's going to overlap a little bit, mm -hmm. the existing fence. It's going to set off about three feet. Um, that's, that's really, um, the scope of work was really that, and then some repairs to the baseball fence. I've gone around and put some um, flagging, some survey tape on this outfield fence. It got ripped apart a few spots, and there's some yeah. bars inside. Mm -hmm. Called four different companies, um, gave them as many chances as I could, only two responded. That's not unusual. Um, <laughs> I, uh, we, were, we knew this would come in under $5,000, so it wasn't a posted to town clerks or directed the yeah. it. But for best practices, we still wrote a scope of work and we still invited as many people as we could. No, well, that's great. Yeah. We got two people to bite. I don't know if you have those in front of you or not, but um, I can yeah. pass, can pass around. I made one package. Um, yeah. Middlebury fence, in short, and White's fence were the two that responded. Um, I think it's noteworthy that Middlebury fence returned the call the next day, came up, looked at it like literally within 48 hours of the proposal the very next day after he looked at it. It was very businesslike. Um, White's, I nagged and said, geez, we're about to go to the recreation committee meeting and if I don't have a second bid, you don't have a chance. This is your last call. It was the rainy day he came out um, that Thursday when the torrential rains. He looked at it and his report um, comparatively came a couple of days later, but I had to nag him to get it. Middlebury fence was like a like you like maybe Ray, with some construction mothers would experience like a, I mean, this is a detailed takeoff. They've got software programs. Yes. So for every for every length of fence they do, they know how many nuts and bolts and fasteners and what they do. So he has a pretty sophisticated program. Yeah. Also, I think be comparatively, um, like is a you know he's a kind of a one man operation and you know, he did what he did, which is uh, not not much cheap to it. Um, his came in less, Middlebury Defense came in higher. Um, in kicking it around the committee, there was some experience with fencing in the past. Both, both the town and the school separately and together had, had done it. We were represented on a group, thankfully. We had these incredible resources. <laughs> and there was sort of a universal, from the folks who had experience, um, said, we think we should go not with whites um, this time. Okay. So that was how the committee voted to go with the Middlebury fence. And um, I see there's a rough link, and I looked at over six hundred dollars difference. Yes, roughly. I had to do the total on on whites. He didn't provide yeah. it. So well, and again, not getting into the, the specs based on your recommendations. Oftentimes, you know, we're going to go for value here, and the six hundred dollars would probably be well spent. I think. We also felt that um, there wasn't any detail in the whites, and so we weren't sure that we were comparing apples and apples, and that we were, you know, there just wasn't enough information in the whites bid for us to really determine who we were getting the value from. Right, and for the military bid, you're sure that you're getting what you want. Exactly. Is that the What are the two numbers? So the, uh, the total for uh, uh, the military fence came at 375930 $3,759.30. 3, and whites came in at three thousand one hundred and ninety-six and forty-five cents. Mm -hmm. So very around thirty-eight hundred versus thirty-two hundred if you were doing sort of mm -hmm. um, thousand foot flyover. And I don't so, remember what's the town share on this? Um, actually, we do have that. <laughs> we had projected um, 
3835 for just the tennis mm -hmm. court fence. So this is both. And the you know it's split. The fence work is split equally between the town mm -hmm. and the school. Mm -hmm. So your share in our original budget was 1917, it'll be a little bit less. Thank you. Uh, so they do know that we're tax exempt, right? But they have put in hundred dollars in tax. Yes, I mean, we'll provide them with the appropriate tax ID number. We have the yeah. sort of thing we do, yeah. and they provide us with insurance. I mean, um, forgive me, I don't do a lot of spending the town's money. <laughs> so right. just, that's why I'm relying on you and the... And the um, I'm sorry, we'll say you right now. Yeah. Certificate of insurance, yeah. uh, tax ID, and we're actually giving you the tax ID. Yeah. Um, so and then you will love that $100 should be off that rate. Right. right. Yeah. So um, we can make a so actually it's a five hundred dollars difference rather than the uh, okay. six hundred because that total didn't include tax. Oh right, but an actual tax. line item in this right. paper it was not in white, so it's it's two. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good assumption. Um, so um, one of the questions I have is, you know, again, this was a this was a real proposal, the kind that you can actually, ex mm -hmm. I mean, you can get your teeth into it in a sense because you can sign it. And my real question is, is, you know, do you guys, this is probably for you to sign, not for me. Um, you guys are going to write, not, not, and when I say me, Recreation Committee um, versus Select Board, we're really just an arm of you anyway. Right. That's how I look at it. Um, and you, got, you, you know what, why don't we just move to accept the proposal uh, for the Middlebury Fence Company? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, go back. Aye. Aye. Thanks a lot, guys. If you could just make sure Sasha gets a copy of that. Oh, yeah. So that I, I'll, I'll make sure I, everything runs through this stuff. Okay, clerk's office. Yeah. It's safe to say. Right? I mean, you guys are going to raise the check. But it's good. Thank you for acting on it because they booked four to six weeks out. So this is going to, we want to start going to come for your public meeting portion and not um, take up more of your time than necessary, but not wait another two weeks to get on the agenda. So when was it you first discussed this? Because this all sounded very, very familiar. Uh, so we're in the budget uh, time. Yeah. So back in October. Yeah, we anticipated doing this project this year, and we got a, um, we got an estimate. We got an actual estimate at that point. To start penciling in. Points, I believe, right? <laughs> yeah, that's why we wanted to give him another shot. I'm saying he came out and gave us the original. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, if you're just going to put a budget over in, I put X. You know, that's what I did. Well, good. And I want to thank um, the rec committee for the way you plan things in as well. It makes it easy for the board to make a decision on it. Um, it's all together. It's very concise and, so, and uh, so we appreciate that as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and real quick, I, I emailed John about this, but the minutes of the last meeting reflect that he had asked uh, me about the land management plan and that if our committee was working on it. Um, that's incorrect and he, he knows a key. Uh, I, got, I got a correction from him. Okay, good. good. For, uh, minutes, he I, just asked us to come to the board and talk about it. So. I got a few corrections. Um, I'm sure there'll be someone around the table, probably as well. Okay, good, great. Um, we're all set. For, yeah. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you very much for coming. In. Appreciate all Thanks. Thanks. Welcome to spend the rest of the evening here with us if you'd like. <laughs> no. I'll just let her just roam for me. Game. Hey, how you doing? Kristen, you're welcome to pull out what we have. I just I'm just didn't. I'm actually, I'm just here to report a dangerous dog run. Hurdle run. <laughs> <laughs> Luna, I, I feel something should be gone. I think you could step on that one. How are you? Um, well, we, we have tried to make a better effort to um, kind of be in touch with you um, and to come to select board meetings to keep you updated on what's going on with the school board. Of course, the school board is now on summer break, mercifully, so um, not, they won't reconvene until August. Um, but at the last meeting, there was a phenomenal showing of four town parents, John Boom Boom um, came, um, you know, expressing their concerns about, um, you know, creating uncertainty about the future of the elementary school, um, the effect that that has on the town, and the, the foot shooting effect that has on our, uh, effort, our ongoing efforts to recruit and encourage younger families to move to this area, to the entire district. Um, so uh, I think a lot of people showed up, a lot of people spoke really well to um, the, the issues. Uh, it meant a lot to me that John would, would take the time after, you know, in addition to the duties for the town to come and, um, uh, and be there. Um, and that's sort of where we are. Um, I apologize for missing the last meeting. Chris and I had come to ourselves. I had some visitors and we got distracted with them. 
Um, so we, at this point, we don't, I, I don't know that we know a great deal more than one could read the paper in terms of, um, you know, what the options put forward for analysis by the full board were. Um, I think we'll see when we come back in August, um, you know, what information we have. Um, and, you know, that, that's where we are, but um, I think uh, I, and I think Kristen's sort of the same mind, you know, I'm concerned that, that um, you know, not only about the analytical process and making sure it's tra transparent and proceeds from findings to conclusions and not in the other direction, but uh, also about the effects on all of these towns, every town in the district, of coming up on four years of uncertainty and, and talk about what's going to happen. Nobody can be quite sure if something's going to happen, we don't know what or what. And that, I think that has a very, um, it has consequences for the real estate market, it has consequences for the morale of the people. Um, working uh, for the district and it has consequences for parents. Um, and I, I think we've all uh, learned from this unique experience. Um, it's our first time doing the Act 46 thing. It wasn't something we chose. Um, you know, I think lessons have been learned along the way, but um, there's no question that um, this process has caused a great deal of, um, uh, of upset and, and uncertainty. And some of it, at least, was avoidable. I think we had a second run at doing the Act 46 merger process. I, I having shared the committee that did that, mm -hmm. I, in retrospect, think it was a colossal mistake and shouldn't have been allowed to proceed to a vote on the merger authority without a plan in place for people to vote on. Um, you know, uh, is, uh, you know I mean, here we are, four years later or something, to, you know, with really no substantive uh, final answer to the question, what is it we're trying to do here, and what are the costs and benefits? Um, and, um, you know, I, I think that's a, it's been a challenging process. It was everybody's first time doing it, and only time doing it. Um, but I, I certainly think that if we had it to do a second time, it would, um, everybody involved would know that it would quite differently. Do a little different, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, what you said, the, your, your point on, we've actually, as a board, I mean, you guys can chime in what you, we heard there, but we've talked about some of those same issues, and I've got a letter I'm going to share with the board tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they've seen it or, or any, it, it was printed today, mm -hmm. um, that I've worked with. And a lot of those questions that we just asked that we'll continue to ask mm -hmm. um, and remind about the transparency, about you know what the goals are here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and quite frankly, I, we've addressed um, the letter that was sent to you by Ms. Sullivan as well. I thought that was very inappropriate, um, mm -hmm. unprofessional, and it makes me really, really um, wonder about the governance of the board mm -hmm. and whether they really understand. I, I would like to add to that that I personally am proud of having been called selfish in that letter because that means that I'm looking out for the interests of this town. So yeah. Um, so I hope I take the position that you know I was left to buy more town to make the best decisions for more town and the entire district and that's what I'm going to continue to do. No, Which means that I will continue to come here as needed and voice whatever, and so that's right. And there are going to be there are going to be times, and I'm sure you, you know, and oftentimes sometimes the boards don't agree with each other on, on what we vote on. But you know, we're still individuals, and we have an opportunity, and there needs to be you know, an opportunity for one to let their constituents know this is the way we're feeling. What I think, I think um, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we need to, you know call it like it is and you know I have you know it's a tough job that boards do so and it's a big board a school board so it's a challenge for uh, uh, Ms. Hollister to, to run that but you know hopefully going forward I think she has you know I, I actually had a discussion with her today um, almost half an hour discussion just to 
really talk about everything that, that goes on and try to get a few answers. And I, I you know, there was a little, you know, it wasn't getting exactly what we want, but, you know, but I think they're working hard. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I see uh, her as a, an asset there. Yeah, I, th I think I agree with you. I'm glad that you connected. I know she had tried to connect with you a little bit before the last yes. um, meeting. Um, you know, I think she's thrown phenomenal energy into trying to improve the cross communication between interested parties. There are a lot of interested parties in this exhausting job. Um, so we're all kind of trying to cooperate and support her and, um, you know, running a, a tight procedural ship and, and finding time to communicate with everybody. Um, and, you know, that's, that's sort of where we uh, are. Uh, it's, uh, I saw what you were talking about too, and I, unfortunately that is a cultural, um, uh, there's some cultural training that <laughs> was imparted to people at the beginning of this process that was, you know, your job is uh, not to advocate for people like you, but to, um, you know, protect the, the institution from our inexplicably numerous uh, critics. <laughs> well, maybe that might not be exactly how this is meant to work, but the, I, it's a powerful way to have a hand on how folks are doing to do something or training and undoing that and kind of, um, and also kind of educating the board on its obligations to the broader community, to the social effects in the big picture on community development on morale, on, um, you know, exactly, we have, all have a common interest, no matter what town you're in, in making sure that there's a district now, as a district, because an equalized people to us is an equalized people now. It doesn't matter what town the equalized people is attracted to. Um, we are all interested in making sure that um, this entire area does well. Um, and we have a great opportunity to do that. Um, they, it means, as we talked about before, I think select boards making sure that they're friendly to residential development and making sure that um, you know they do what few things are in their control yeah. to make sure there's affordable housing. Um, and it has to do with all of us projecting kind of confidence about the future and um, not unnecessarily causing alarm. Um, and you know, I, I think that's one of the big, big lessons. And as I say, everybody in this process, and I'm sure the legislature too would have done this very differently if they had to do it again. Um, so all we can do is um, watch and, then, uh, and I know Peter Rangel has been kind of champion of looking at research from other areas that have attempted similar things and about the secondary effects. Um, and that's an area where we could clearly do a lot better than we have. Um, right, and I think that's one of the areas I've discussed with Caitlin, and she agreed that, you know, we're going to come back with um, three scenarios and then the do nothing scenario, but that's not it. There's other stuff involved in that, such as what we're talking about, the other the other stuff that makes a community. Um, and that was refreshing to hear from her that, all right, we, we may get these three proposals or whatever they are, but that's not end game here. There's many other factors, um, so it's not all based on, you know, what you may see in the paper, whether it's uh, cost or moving students. There's other factors that she's um, willing to, to look at. Mm -hmm. Says there's a plan to it. So, yeah, so, so we're all kind of watching and waiting until August, I guess, and, and enjoying not having to meetings. <laughs> but, but I think in August we'll have to tune in hard and um, you know see what. Um, what well, it's going to be a lot of hard work, and you know, so yeah, enjoy your time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know what, Kristen, while well, I get you right here, you yes. had set a correction for the meeting minutes, right? Yes. Okay, so why don't um, we just do meeting minutes right now, if everyone doesn't mind, so that way we can, we can make sure we're okay. <clears throat> so, why don't you just go over there, so you saw to have us know what you uh, saw? Yeah, so this was... Um this was just brought to my attention at yeah, sure. a com uh, conversation with Caitlin last Tuesday. And so she brought the things up because I think in the minutes it said that mm -hmm. the number one, Chris want to make the position clear to the that she is 100% in, in favor of moving five and six. And I believe I said was not 100% not in favor. So I think it just, mm -hmm. there was a missing, a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Word that means a lot. Did uh, you get that set? Yeah. 
And then the other one was that uh, number two is that she was quoted on the school board member as saying, we have to show taxpayer savings. It's not about what's best for the kids. I believe what I said is we have to show taxpayer savings. I've never heard them say it's what's best for the kids. So that was the that was the two bigger things that yep. stuck out in my mind. Mm -hmm. I remember that phrase. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's good. So that's correct. Ray, do you have any other corrections? I don't. So I mean, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> John, um, to Michelle's point, we want to clarify, I didn't mean the rec committee would be working on the plan, but we would be exploring um, forming a land management committee that would include someone from the rec committee. How much minutes are those? Oh. Yeah. It's um, six, three minutes. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, was, uh, was there anything else that you guys have? I was just here a supportive person. So. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you guys for keeping an eye yeah. on things. And, um, and um, thank you uh, to, to John and everybody who came out. I think mm -hmm. it really spoke to uh, what a phenomenal asset uh, the school is and how proud people are of, of what everybody's built there. So. Good. Well, I'm glad everyone and I think our colleague. Uh, we all were fighting to do it, and then John, John did it. You know, John won. Picked the fucking big straw. So, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Have okay. a wonderful summer. Yes. So, um, one other item um, that's related is, I believe many of us got a call from the chair of the school board. Um, I didn't get that call. Uh, okay. Um, I, I was only left a voice message, which I returned and left a voice message, but. Apparently, she wants to connect with all of these select board members. Yeah, like I said, I spoke with her today. Okay. Yeah. When was that? Uh, when was that message left? Or when did you call? Tuesday. Um, Probably Monday or Tuesday, something like that. Mm -hmm. She's reached out. She emailed earlier as well. Yeah. Well, it's really encouraging that people yeah. are kind of, kind of talking mm -hmm. across um, across lines and whatnot. So um, that's great. We hope it keeps up over the summer, and we'll see what. Uh, and that's what our conversation said. Communication will be key going yeah. forward between everyone, all parties. Um, and that's really good. And that will help alleviate some of the fears out there. They kept there. Exactly. And and that's more so so like we were talking about, it's like I don't need any surprises anymore. Mm -hmm. I need, you know, when those big things, yeah. well, heads up. You know, um, so that way you, you know, you can control a little bit. Because otherwise, when you read it, or you know, someone else comes in and shares it with you, you know, really it's damage control at that point. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we learned about some strange things. Good. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Yep. So is there any uh, movement on the uh, meeting minutes? Um, I have a question on 6.3. There's something that said that I would like to have included. That's OK to be done. Um, well, you said it, Jason. When we're pulling about, when we were talking about the CDL stuff, I just wanted to know that I recommended that we start pulling the record record just a bit right away. That would be before the last sentence on that. Is that OK? Uh, where is that, Jason? Why don't you just start um, here? And as we go over the CDL stuff. Yep. In this case, I, I recommend you that we, okay, let's do it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that was because they started the process that night. We all yeah. did it so they mm -hmm. I guess they did what you had. So, would anyone uh, make a motion on the 6 3? Oh, I move we accept the minutes as amended. Yes. Uh, 6 3 and 6 17. Second. Second. Kevin, thank you. Uh, any further questions? Concerns? All favor of aye. 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 A
I am 617 abstaining from 638 because I wasn't here. Ah, you can still vote on, but that's fine for abstaining. We'll just... It's all right. It's, we've got the freeze lunch. We have a quorum. I don't mind. Exactly. Yeah. I counted before I did that. I take you to do that. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. So why don't we uh, now move on to reports, uh, communications. Sasha, we'll start over there. What do you got? Are you ready? Or? Yeah. Um, before I left today, I think Ray already knows about it. I came from here, right? But yeah, about right. Yeah, I had a call. He's got a complaint about all of our national pictures. Thank you. Basically, he, told, uh, he did call me up prior to sending the email. He had, uh, the town had done some ditching up there mm -hmm. and not finished uh, done any erosion control. Uh, and apparently, built in some culvert, the dry culvert built mm -hmm. in as a result of that. Mm -hmm. I did send a copy to the mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what Morton's plan doing that work? I think he's doing a digit. He's been following, been following up on doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, has he? Uh, uh, I, you know, I think that he has been, but I don't know. Yeah, usually they're right on. They have been. Unless, mm -hmm. or Brandon probably was like Thursday or something yeah, like that. Saturday, and, yeah. and all of a sudden, well, that needs to be taken care of, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I could like tell Tom, I bring it up to the board. Uh, yeah. Very important when you do the ditch work to follow oh. it up and finish it. And we can reach out to Martin on that. I will. Oh, you did. I will uh, uh, I'm sure I'll talk to him tomorrow morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, knowing Martin, it, 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 there's, there's probably a legitimate reason that. Yeah, I think it's a little bit that came up, like maybe we start reading it. <laughs> And you're good about that, so I'm not too, too concerned. It's not a good idea. It's in the hand real time. So the Planning Commission actually has somebody interested in filling that position, but it won't be until September, and they want to know if that's okay with you guys to. Have we had any? Um, have we had any other? No. I wanted to wait before I put something out on the porch before I go. Has it been out there once, or? No. no. No, well, it, it, I think it needs to be on front page for one or... Yes, I should. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. front page. Okay. Um, and on the website. The, and on the website. Not anybody looks at it. Oh, the website's starting to get better. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was this gentleman's name? Or, or I said gentleman, I don't know if it was gentleman. Is that the person that Karen had... Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, if Karen had said that through, I think he'd be a, a good candidate. Um, but let's see what we have. Okay. You know, we need to uh, put it out there. But otherwise, I could, uh, if no one else comes up, you'd be good. I think Cheryl had emailed that back to him, but it might be, um, let's just see what we have. Okay, okay. And I had Derek Terry would like to be <clears throat> a consideration for that summit that Vermont Council on Rural yep. Development. Mm -hmm. And Deborah Feldman had also suggested or Paula. Jonathan for, for what was that? I missed that. For the um, that summit that's free. For leadership Montana. summit. Oh, the, yeah, leadership. Um, and you, all right. So Dara asked, mm -hmm. and then there was a request by who, or a suggestion by Deborah Feldman uh, nominated Jonathan Siegel. Karen Horn or Paul? Do either of those three have any interest in doing? Do we know? I don't know. But Dara actually showed interest in something. Yeah. Like and Dara's a great portion for this actually. Mm -hmm. um, she's done a lot of things mm -hmm. and her energy is high. I would uh, let's say we need to ask Dara to do it. You know, she's expressed interest in it. It's good way to go. Agreed. Ray, if you want us Yep. All right. What's next, Sasha? I know you're right, and you're doing minutes and everything, so <laughs> you get it. You've got two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the tax maps are now on the website. Just wanted to let you know. 
Oh, nice. Good to know. And a fine came in from, <coughs> with payment from Jeff Rothenberg. Shane. Shane, fault with that done, with that taken care of. So Riley has been free from jail, I think it's fine. Um, Were there any comments along with that? No. <laughs> Just check. And I sent you an email about Kurt Peterson with the Reesfield Champlain Valley Telecom. Okay. <clears throat> Want to do some very of fiber optic. Yeah, and I think we just need to just a right way that we just sign it on that. <laughs> the Martin has approved it, so it's um yeah, it's actually nothing that we actually have to sign on. I think Martin is doing that. Where is it? In the road, in the old section where the old road used to be. Uh, one inch cable, orange from Route 100 B and the Freeman Hill Road to the current cable area mm -hmm. just north of 183. So they're just going to be in the right place. Mm -hmm. That's right inside. Mm -hmm. All right, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then I have a letter from Ron. All right, yeah, we'll go with that okay. a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Christopher Butch sent me a bit of a long. I think I've already told all of you. Um, road permit request. Oh, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was more he was following up with on that with Martin. That was, um, I think, did we address that last meeting? More time Mountain Road. Yeah, because he just wants to, um, they're extending the, the um, from Dr. Butch's house just up to his son's a little bit. Yep. And would we not discuss that or did I just read that? All right, so maybe I just read it, the email. I know about it. I'm so to what was what was the question on there? I think he's just asking for permission. So he would have to do a road from Yeah, he just needs to do a simple um not a curb cut. Uh, working the right away. Access. Working the right away access. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, it's the same. It'll be the same thing that we still take. Mm -hmm. This is what they're doing. So that's what I thought that was. Oh, you thought that was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. It's not in here, but I think I remember. I, think I remember I talking about Good. it. Good. Why was it? No. Mm -hmm. All right. And not stop. Next. You're doing a great job, by the way, for your <laughs> second meeting, doing two different things. There's, um, <clears throat> I forwarded to everybody the Act 48 to go over. They just want to make sure that um, the health inspector mm -hmm. is in the job now. And I forwarded it to Richard Bellatin. All right, yeah. So as long as make sure Nick has got this and, um, it's just want to make sure that in rental units that they do and do, do inspections that we uh, let the state know about what the inspection was and how it turned out. Uh, and it's a, just so the um, request for data is critical for the state to understand the nature and volume of rental housing complaints that are received uh, in each town. So what kind of housing complaints worthwhile legislation I guess. Anything else? That's it? Um, Jason, how about you? Yeah, um, well, this was another one that came through the office. Uh, don't know that we have to deal with it yet. It's due August 1st. But the um, town road and bridge standards. And I'll at least raise the question that I have on this because we have to sign off on this or we don't get it. Right. But, you know, it's like the Chinese menu. You get two from column A and one from column B. And I'm looking for some advice as to the best thing for more town to select. Um, my take looking at it is we do not need to sign on for non-hydrologically connected plus four roads. And I'm wondering if I'm mistaken in some way and there's a reason to do that. 
What exactly does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for so Jason, pardon me, is this what yes, it's uh, new? Uh, new it's it's it. Well, tell me what you think it means. Uh, uh, okay. Um, class four roads, for this purpose, are divided into two types, right. hydrologically connected and not. And the definition of hydrologically connected appears to be whether it shows up on some specific a and map. Okay. I have not looked at the a and map to determine which of our class four roads are considered hydrologically connected and which are not. Connected to what? Connected to class three road? No. Uh, to hydrologically road. connected means that if it has a drainage or erosion problem where the water ends up is significant. Okay. So it means, does it make it to a body of water we care about? We, in that case, being the state. And the question, so we sign on? We sign, we agree that we are going to adhere to the standards for the different categories of roads. Um, we're effectively made to sign on to this for most categories of roads, or we won't qualify for X, Y, and Z. Right. It looks like there's nothing making us sign on for non-hydrologically connected class four. And I'm wondering if there is some reason that we should sign anyone or not for that category. For example, it's possible that if those roads are damaged and flooding, FEMA would pay for it if we were adhering to those standards. Right. But that doesn't seem to be a finalized agreement or there's no written evidence for it yet. So what do we know and what should we sign on this today? Well, what in the past, I have, and we'll have to look that up to see what we've done in the past. I think this is all new because of the new um, stormwater standards. Stormwater standards. Yeah, because yeah, so typically there's not an option. You typically, here's what the new standards are. Yep. But they do let you they do indeed. Certainly, yes or no. If a class four road is running, well, I'm just over Harry Brook out here. So mm -hmm. it's running parallel to Harry Brook. Mm -hmm. So that's a connected. So yes. I think you'll find most of the roads have a brook near them that eventually ends up in mm -hmm. the, either a new street or a river. Probably why it's flat enough to build a road, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think you'd have a hard time finding a non hydraulically connected road yeah. in Wartown. So yeah, so we want to sign on for I think, so, I think no one know. no one has seen that map. So we don't know what's included and what isn't. Yeah. But no, but I guess making a just just drive some of the time. <laughs> your experience yeah. tells you that well I mean everything does. Yeah. It all goes into Mm -hmm. Exactly. You think, you'll, but I mean, you know, do you have the resources, Jason? Maybe get a look at that map and see what it's. Uh, is it? Yeah, no, is it right on their website? Um, what I've discovered in the past is the A and R maps have a thousand different layers they on them. They do have that. You have to know what you're doing to select. So I may or may not be successful. To give it a shot. Brought this to our attention. I think it would be nice to, um, you know, if we could look at it. Mm -hmm. and make it mm -hmm. I think just raise making, uh, you know, like I said, Tom Sands to tell us this, but let's really look at it and see. I may be surprised. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any answers? That was it. Kelly, how are you? So I got an email from Steve McGill today. Steve McGill. That Leo Graves Colbert has not weed in it. And he went and proceeded to spray a few squirts of Roundup over there. And then I should watch where I get my fill from. And you know, I, mean, <laughs> I really meant to get up there, but it's been a pretty rough couple of weeks from tonight. We have lost track of a lot of stuff. And I certainly will I can hopefully figure out this week. All right, maybe I'll take Dr. Steve and see what's going on. I have a feeling that I know what it is. I also talked to Vicki today about just to double check with her because I think there may be an issue with spraying Roundup A around the town ditch line 
because you need to have a commercial applicator's license to spray any kind of stuff like that off your property, from what I've heard. Now who's spraying around it? Steve. So he came over, he would have... I'm Steve McGill spraying it? Yeah. Steve McGill spraying around it? I wouldn't be surprised that would be so bad. I have the email. I have the email. <laughs> no, I, the email. I forwarded it to that's, Sasha that's, to email it back to you guys agree, just agree. so you have it because I don't really want to be in the middle of this conversation. Right, if you want to run up there and just... Yeah. Um, I know Martin is, is certified to spray ground up. Yeah. Where he has been in the past. Um, I don't know if he still does. Because I did let Sean know, because Sean's been the mm -hmm. one who's been over there doing right. all of the work. And he, from what I heard, touched base with Martin and Martin and said that you need to do that. And they don't even spray around there. But also, there was a bunch of ditching done there last year. So if there is not weed there, where did it come from? Who knows? But just that's what I got today. I guess what so what is what is Steve's what is Steve's email say? I pull it up and read it. I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Hey Callie, I just wanted to give you a heads up that the new that the fill for the new culvert at Leo's property seems to be infected with Japanese knotweed. I gave a few new shoots a squirt of Roundup. It's going to need vigilant attention for a few years. So far, Herring Brook has been free of knotweed, and Jonesbrook has been mostly free upstream of the Berlin Town Line. Once it gets established, it's nearly impossible to remove it. It will lower property resale values and will degrade the stream habitat. It tends to work its way downstream, so if it gets established on Leo's property, it will work its way across Helen's property and then downstream all the way to Jonesbrook. Be careful about where the fill comes from. So, yeah, I mean, go out and take a look at it if you could, Ray. Yeah. And see if there is not weed, and then talk to Martin and see what we're doing with not weed. When we had Bill that had come from the river yeah. many years ago, right. and I think it was up on um, South, Hill, yeah. South Hill Road, because someone else up there used some up on it. We we're surprised to do one of those, but, you know, it is what it is you have to use. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is if it's in that ditch line, there's running water through that ditch line that runs right down into the brook. So anything you spray there. Right. So that would be it. But that, those are the technical things that if, because mm -hmm. we won't be doing it if we're not certified. Right. And if they're certified, they'll know how to do it right. in those ditch areas. Because I'm sure there's protocol mm -hmm. for that. Um, so if you can just go up and assess the situation, yeah. I think any time that we can eradicate or, or just, uh, just, you know, mm -hmm. stop it, not wait. Really um, Let's. Do we need to make sure that somebody in the road crew is certified? I think when you're uh, checking with him, I think that would be the whole yeah. loop of the conversation. Is mm -hmm. if not, then we need to get someone. Sounds good. Thank you. I would just yes. say I think this is going to be a further issue the more work is done on that piece of property. So. Do you think it's the knotweed's coming from the property? Or I don't think it's anything to do with the knotweed. That's just the okay. Okay. So just be aware there may be some that's, more phone calls. That's all right. Coming that's in. Good heads up. Right? Right? Yep. No, I'm not. All right. Well, what else do we have here? It was. This should we be in executive session? We're not discussing this. We're not discussing. I just wanted to bring this out. So okay. I have it. Why don't you take it home? Thank you. And I need to get a little more more work mm -hmm. around it. This was just this is the money we have. Right. And this is kind of backfilling it this way. Let's see um, if we're where we want to be. Just one general question. When you say current current rate, 
Does that rate already include a two percent increase for this year? Yeah, it would be so, more. Yes, it would be more than what's going on for this year. So that's in, that's January's pay where we uh, approved it in March, but budgeted last year two percent. Yeah. So we, okay. Yeah. So this is last year's rate. So right. Technically, and they've had a two percent increase okay. already. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, we had some great. And maybe, Katie, would you mind forwarding me that? Um, like five minutes ago. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, just to do comparisons. I have that. Actually, I have it home ripped out of the paper. But if I could have it on the electronic, it would be nice. That way, it would be easier to um, move around. But so I wanted to, by uh, next meeting, act on this as we told uh, everyone we would. So expect a little bit. Of, uh, few emails on this, not to discuss, but just more information, mm -hmm. and then bring your thoughts next meeting to um, approve it. And that's pretty much what I have for communications there. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, personnel policy. And we looked at that. Did everyone have an opportunity to uh, make sure that my old one from last week that we are going to sign for the one set with it? Is there another? All right. Is there a motion on that, Jason? Uh, sure. I need to accept the personal policy as amended with changes to the ZLC. Very good. So, all set. Session with. Um, and then we'll sign some stuff. So we're all set here. 